In this video, I want to show how to apply joints to our twist vase design here to get it to mimic real life. So we kind of created our own custom threads here, I guess we can call them, in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, I showed a video how I designed the vase here. And the beautiful aspect of these is when you 3D print them, they are so oddly satisfying watching them twist in and out of each other. And we can mimic that motion in Fusion 360. Now a question that was previously asked is if these features are available in the free personal license and the answer is yes. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show how you can get this to mimic real life. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just delete my motion link and my joint and my ground pin there. So we'll start from exactly where we left off in the last video. So I have these two components and you can see I can move them around, uh, freely move them and I'm going to click here to revert them back to the original position. Now before we add joints we have to prevent at least one of these components from moving around. And I'm going to apply a ground to the inner component here. So I'm going to right click, click ground, and now you can see here, I can move my outer component, but I can't move this inner one. So perfect. All right, next we're going to apply the joint. And to do that, we'll go to assemble down to as build joint, as build because these were modeled in place. And I'll get my dialog box here. And the dialog box, it's gonna ask me what type of joint I wanna apply. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose my cylindrical. Now the cylindrical joint is a little more complex than these uh, first three joints here, because it, we can read here that it's, it's basically two joints. It says it's gonna rotate and slide a component on a single axis. So it's basically applying a revolute and a slider joint. I'll choose cylindrical. And then I have to choose which components I want to apply this to. And here you're better off just selecting it on your browser. I'll click my outer and my inner. And the third thing I need to do is to give it a uh, origin of rotation. And it's a little confusing here because you'll try to click OK and nothing will happen. Uh, but first what we need to do is give it a center of rotation here. You'll see there it'll say select snap point to define the joint origin. I'm going to click on that center of my polygon there, that hexagon. And now I have applied my joint. So here we can see we can click on preview motion and we can see the rotation. I'll click stop. Notice you have a rotate and a slide option here. If I click the slide button and click the preview, it'll move up and down. Let's click OK and observe this a little more. So here I can see I can move this up and down and if I move my mouse left to right, it rotates. But there's no connection there, right? There's no link between the up and down movement and the rotation. And for that feature, we don't apply it in the actual joints. We have to add another feature here. And we can find that also under assembly, and that's called our motion link. So I'll click on motion link. Uh, it's going to tell me to, if I want to revert position, I'm going to go ahead and click revert and that just brings everything back to its starting position. And here it's going to ask me for my joints. Now an important thing to consider here is that you apply joints to components, but you apply motion links to your joints. So here it wants to know what joint do I want to apply the motion link to. I'm going to go back to my browser and I'm going to select my cylindrical joint. And then I'm going to click here where it says link with same joint. And now we get this motion happening. So let's just click OK here and observe what changes were made. So now I can see here as I move this up, it's slowly moving up. You can see and it's turning. So the motion link is applied, but it doesn't really mimic real life here. So let's go back and make some changes. I'll click on motion link, edit feature. I can see that it's asking me for a few things here. I have two options that say cylindrical and one that says distance, one that says angle. This first cylindrical is set to slide and the second one is set to rotate. And I've got my distance and my angle. So, okay. So basically it wants to know for this distance, how much do you want to rotate? And it's set to every 10 millimeters, we're gonna rotate 360 degrees and that's what we see here when we animate it. 
It's not exactly what we want, as we can see it doesn't work. So let's look at how we can find the right numbers to throw here. So for that, we have to kind of go back and see how we designed this. If you recall, and if you haven't yet checked the previous video, but the way we approach this is we use the sweep. We gave it a distance and we said for this distance, I want you to twist this angle. So if I go back to this second sketch here that I made, we have this full distance is 80 millimeters. And the twist angle we applied was 180 degrees. So that gives us the information we need. So I'm gonna click OK and go back to our motion link here, edit that feature. So what I'm going to say here is for every 80 millimeters, I want you to rotate an angle of 180 degrees, hit animate, and there we have it. That's all it takes. Now, if you see that it's going the wrong way, you kind of will see this happening. Just click the reverse button here and that will look a lot more pleasing. Okay, let's revert that position. And now you should be able to see that you can go ahead and move this up and down and you can see it perfectly mimic real life here as it should. Okay, the final thing we'll do is let's add some limits here because we can see this will continue going up and down. And we'd like it to stop at the bottom and maybe stop you know, at the top here. So to do that, we have to actually go back now to the joint, that cylindrical joint, edit joint. And here we, in the bottom, we have this joint motion limit. And again, the two options, the rotate and the slide. I don't want to apply a limit to my rotate, but I do want to apply one to my slide. So here I'll click the minimum and maximum numbers here. And it can be a little bit confusing um, here, but basically let's just keep this simple and I'll say, we're gonna start at zero and we're gonna go the full length of 80. Now, what I've learned is you always want your minimum to be your lower number. So let's set that to zero. And the maximum, I'm gonna set that to 80. We can preview the limits. It looks good, click okay. And now when I move this, we'll see that it'll go down, it'll stop right at the bottom, and then it'll stop right at the top. But there we have it, very satisfying to see this just kind of twist right into place. So this is a way you can create your own custom spirals and create joints and motion links that allow your models to behave like they would in real life. So you can actually see uh, how it's gonna work you know, before you 3D print it. So, okay, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, uh, like and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, I also have some resources uh, linked below where you can find some design courses I've made. And I also have a live class that I do a weekly on Tuesdays if you would like personalized help with your Fusion 360 models. And of course, there's my Patreon page if you just want to support more content like this. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.